This episode of SciShow is supported by NordVPN. You can head to nordvpn.com slash scishowvpn for a special offer and a 30-day risk-free trial. If we're gonna find our way out of this climate crisis that we've created, we'll need a few radical ideas. And right now, lots of these ideas are aimed at getting our emissions down to zero to keep the Earth from getting catastrophically warmer, which would be great. But we also need to deal with the amount of climate change that's already locked in. And to do that, we also need to think big. One consequence we're already seeing is sea level rise as glaciers and ice sheets melt into the ocean. That's why some scientists are exploring ways to geoengineer glaciers on a massive scale in the hope of slowing down the rising water. Geoengineering is the idea of intentionally manipulating the environment on massive scales, like putting giant mirrors in space to reflect some sunlight away from Earth so things can cool down a bit, or scattering little particles throughout the atmosphere to keep some light from getting through. But many of these ideas are pretty controversial, so the whole thing is more concept than practice, at least for now. It's not like we haven't already been manipulating the climate for centuries by pumping greenhouse gases into the air and cutting down trees. But tinkering with our one and only home planet on purpose is not something everyone can get behind. Still, massive problems call for massive proposed solutions, and one massive problem is melting ice. Water that's currently locked into ice in Antarctica and Greenland could lead to over 20 meters of sea level rise if it melts into the sea. That's enough sea level rise to cover a six-story building and wash a bunch of islands and coastal cities straight off the map. So while it comes with some risks, scientists and governments have been talking about using geoengineering to deal with melting glaciers. And one idea is to keep glacial ice cold by putting a blanket on it. That's because in some glaciers, a lot of the melting happens right at the top, where warmer air touches the ice. And when melting begins, it tends to set up a vicious cycle. It creates a pool of water, and since water is darker than ice, it absorbs more sunlight, getting even warmer. And that makes it melt more readily, and the cycle continues. Even after these melted pools drain away or dry up, they can leave behind dark debris that absorbs more sunlight than the surrounding ice, and once again, that darker area is more likely to warm up the ice enough that it melts. And that's why in Italy and Switzerland, people have literally covered some glaciers with blankets to reflect sunlight and keep the glaciers from getting too toasty and melting. Unfortunately, there's just no way we're gonna put blankets over all of Greenland and Antarctica. So scientists are thinking about other ways of blanketing ice, and some have come up with a sand-like material that reflects sunlight back into space. In one study, they tested this out on a pond in Minnesota, and it actually worked. Ice that was treated with this special sand stayed frozen much longer than untreated ice. The sand could be spread by hand or using an agricultural seed sower. But even if we're using sand instead of physical blankets, covering large parts of Antarctica and Greenland would still be a huge practical challenge. So in the meantime, some geoengineers research is looking at the other side of glaciers, the parts scraping along the ground. Like rivers, many glaciers drain into the ocean, so fast-moving glaciers lose ice more quickly than slower ones. And many of the fastest-moving glaciers slide out to sea on a layer of liquid water. That water can come from the bottom of the glacier if the ground is warm enough to melt some ice, or if the friction from sliding heats things up. Other times, water slips under glaciers through cracks. Either way, it basically creates a slip and slide that slides the glacier out to sea. So so if we could just get rid of that water, it might slow glaciers down, like a slip and slide without the water. One way we might do this is actually inspired by the very industry that got us into this mess in the first place, oil. The idea is that if we could drill down into glaciers and extract this water, using very similar technology to what's used in oil drilling, we could slow down these glaciers and keep them from draining so quickly into the ocean. We wouldn't do this for all of the world's hundreds of thousands of glaciers, but we could potentially use this approach to stabilize the ice sheets that are contributing the most to sea level rise. As with blanketing glaciers, extracting water from underneath enormous ice sheets comes with a ton of practical challenges, so no one's ready to try this out just yet. But if we do end up drilling a bunch of boreholes in glaciers to drain them, there might be several ways to use them, such as essentially refrigerating the glacier. The idea is this. If we could inject cold substances into these boreholes, we could potentially freeze any water under the glacier. This is basically the same idea as draining the glacier, but just a different flavor. Flavor. It would make the bottom dry and eliminate the slip and slide. And just maybe we could even use the same gas that's caused most of the planet's warming to cool things down. 
We're talking about CO2. When you think of CO2, there's a good chance you automatically think of warming, and that's because CO2 in the atmosphere is famous for trapping heat and making our planet hotter and hotter. But CO2 actually makes a pretty good refrigerant, or substance that cools things down. In fact, it was even used in one of the first ever refrigerators in the 1850s. The way it works is you need a machine that can compress CO2 and turn it into a liquid. Then when it comes in contact with a warmer substance, it absorbs some of that heat and turns back into a gas. There are various gases that can do this, but the great thing about CO2 is that it's relatively harmless when it's not off being a greenhouse gas. So basically, we'd need to build refrigeration systems that could pump liquid CO2 into glaciers, then once it turns back into a gas, liquefy it again and send it back into the hole. Obviously, this is not a simple job, nor a one-stop shop to fix everything, but it could end up being one of the tools in our toolbox. The thing about all of these geoengineering ideas is that we won't be putting any of them into practice tomorrow. None of them are feasible yet on a large scale, and some might just not be possible ever. They all come with enormous technical challenges. But we can't just reverse all the climate change we've already brought upon ourselves. So ideas like these give scientists a place to start thinking about what they actually could realistically change. And you've got to hand it to them, they aren't thinking small. Thank you to NordVPN for supporting this SciShow video. NordVPN is an internet encryption service that lets you keep doing all the same online stuff no matter where you go in the world. That way, you don't have to worry about web site permissions in your location or password phishing scams on top of worrying about the glaciers. NordVPN has over 5,000 servers across 60 countries spanning the Americas, Africa, Europe, Asia, and all the way down to the bottom of Oceania. So no matter where you're watching SciShow from today, you can go to nordvpn.com slash scishowvpn to benefit from their services. My coworkers have used it to watch everything from RuPaul's Drag Race to hockey games. And even the people who work remotely from the other side of the planet can still watch Abbott Elementary and their other US-based favorites. So whether you're looking to stream some binge-worthy shows or protect yourself online, there's an exclusive deal and a 30-day money-back guarantee when you head to nordvpn.com scishowvpn. Just use the code scishowvpn.